Shall I get in the line? Um, thanks for joining us this afternoon. As I mentioned, uh, apologies about Tony uh, beyond our control. I thought to train We should be on by fire, but we've got Nathan Clemley, the WBOI heavyweight champion, who will be defending his title on the 15th of October at the Liverpool Echo Arena in a match that everybody's been waiting for against Tony Bellard. And I'm sure you all know about the circumstances of the last time we tried to get this fight on, which is very short notice. Uh, Tony couldn't make a wait. There was uh, quite a heated press conference, um, which I think has been boiling up for a couple of years now. There's been no love lost between the two guys, I think would be fair to say. And Nathan, um, when I asked him about this fight, you know, he said it's a fight that he wants to get, get, get on. It's a fight he wants to get out of the way. It's uh, been hanging around. There's been a lot of things being said. And to prove the point, he said he'd go into the other guy's backyard to show that he can do it. Obviously, Tony's got other ideas on that. He fancies his chances. He's the uh, British and uh, Commonwealth champion, following in the footsteps of Nathan, who won the British Commonwealth and European title. I think in record time for any British boxer. Um, so we've got a big fight that's, that's going to be on. And, uh, Every, you know, one certainly that I'm looking forward to, and I think there's going to be a lot of fireworks leading up to the fight, and certainly on the night of the fight. Anyway, hopefully it's Tony on the line. Is he on the line? Yeah. Are you there, Tony? Oh, uh, Tony. Good man, right. Um, and stop smoking on those trains in future. Uh, <laughs> right, everybody's here. If you've got any questions to ask, please feel free to do so. Nathan, can I ask, first of all, um, why you agreed to go into Japanese backyard to take this fight, given that you're the champion? Um, I don't think it was really much of a, a tough decision, really. Um, I could have had the choice, really, where I wanted the fight. Um, I could have had it in Wales or up in Liverpool. Um, I was struggling to find the, the, the right venue in Wales, to be honest, or the right capacity for the fight. Um, so, at the end of the day, I thought, if the fight was in Liverpool, it's going to be a good sell. You know, I thought it was pretty much a guaranteed sell out anyway. Um, and it's a boxing ring, you know. It's, it's <laughs> whether it's the boxing ring was set up in year to day, or whether it was in Liverpool, in Wales, um, it, it, you know, it, it makes no difference on the outcome of the fight. Um, it's still Tony Bellew, and I'm still the world champion going in there. And I'm pretty sure that wherever it is, you know, I'll. I would know, definitely beat this guy. It's become very much a grudge match, hasn't it? There's been a lot of heated discussion between yeah. the Tony and the press conference. Yeah, it's definitely it's been a grudge development over the years, really. Um, it's been pretty inevitable. Obviously, I, I turned pro uh, at such a young age. Uh, and I, I won the Commonwealth British titles, European. And now Tony is, is, is at that stage uh, where I was a few years back. You know, he's about six fights behind me, but he's got his shot early. Um, does he really deserve the world title shot? No, but it's a fight that I want to get out of the way. Um, you know, and I, I want to get this fight out of the way and I want the bigger things. And that's the reason why it's happening. Um, and the last press conference pretty much, you know, sold the fight, so it makes sense. And, and just so that you know what's happening. I've been talking to Richard Schaefer uh, on the same night as us. They've got um, Bernard Hopkins uh, fighting Chad Dawson. If Hopkins comes through that fight, the winner gets Hopkins. So that's what we're looking for. That would be a dream fight for you, wouldn't it, Nathan? This yeah. is a, sorry, I'm interrupting you. This, this is, the, let me tell you, this is a tough fight. This is a tough fight for both of them. You know, but there's something there for afterwards. There's something there for the winner. It's a big, big opportunity to go and do the business. And you know, um, it doesn't get any better than that. This is a lively division, and it's going to get lively. Where would that be, friend? In the UK. You, you said that, translate that as well. Yep. And what is close to you? Sorry? What is close to you? Well, we're talking to him, see what he wants to do, you know, but whatever happens, whoever we <coughs> So I lean a bit towards Hopkins. Um, but anyway, that's, that's on the night. So it's quite a, it's a momentous night in the light anyway, on the 15th of October. Um, 
October. Uh, you know, it's it's gonna. You know, if Nathan does all what he he can do, then you're talking about a, you know, a, somebody stepping really up, stepping up to the plate in you know, finding the best in this country, in Tony Bellum. If he comes through that, then you're talking about a huge fight. With, uh, with, with, without that, I think probably the fighter that's impressed me more than any other fighter in the last couple of years. I think what he's done, Hopkins, is phenomenal over the last couple of years. But you know, look at this one out the way first, and obviously Tony Bellum will be looking for that fight to take place in Liverpool if he can be Nathan. So it's uh, it, it, it's there's a lot on this, a lot right on this show. But it was Nathan and Hopkins looking Melanie. Absolutely. Nathan, Tony says that you've not boxed anyone in his class yet. What's your response to that? Um, no, I think <laughs> I'm going to disagree with that. I think overall, throughout my 22 fights, I've boxed a range of styles, um, different opponents. Um, some who box long, were good punches. Um, some who like to fight, compact, you know, tight guards. Um, so I box a, a range of styles really, and they're all good at what they do. Um, I think Tony seems to think he's, you know, he's he's technically sound and, and all this, um, but I can't see that. You know, I think he's limited. Um, in all truth, I think he's limited. And if I can't beat Tony Bellew, then I shouldn't be world champion. There's, there's no doubt about that. So it was a bit of pressure because. You know, what expectation is to win, and I expect myself to win, and I'm, I'm win, I'm win well, um, which I think I will do. Um, you know, I, he's obviously got huge belief. Um, I know he trains hard, so he's dedicated, but you know, all the best to him. But I think, in terms of boxing ability, and in terms of whether he's going to give me my hardest fight, I can't, I can't see that. Who have you fought? Who, who's better? Um, I think, it, well, in, in, in different ways. I think Mohamedi, um, he was he was good in that body then. Murad, Karim Murad was good in, in his compact style, um, in close fighting. Um, you know, I've heard a few, a few years back, you know, like Tony Oki, Danny McIntosh, and I you know, won those fights quite comfortably and, and caught him right. Um, I come through those fights with, with ease, really, and I was, I was, you know, doing exams at the time. So Tony's a full-time fighter now, and he's still at that level. So I think it shows, you know, at that um, a, a great higher. And, uh, but it's easy to talk, it's easy for me to sit here and say that. But ultimately, I've got to prove it on October the fifteenth, and you know, I've got the confidence that I can do that. And, uh, and, and so is Tony. That's what's going to make it. Interesting fight, but you know, I'm world champion now. And I, I've got to keep this belt. I'll, I'll make sure I do that. When, when did the bad feeling start between you and the coach? Uh, it was pretty much the last press conference. Really. That's where it, it, it really kicked off. Uh, it was the, the day before the weigh-in, so you know I was making the weight. And I had Tony coming in, and you know, and, and, and giving it a lot of big talk and uh, shouting off shutting off his mouth, so it kind of riled me up a little bit, and I was prepared to take the fight. I, you know, Jurgen Brink, I trained for a southpaw for that fight, and um, Brink didn't turn up, so I was a bit annoyed anyway. Um, and comes Bailey, who was, was, was giving it the big talk. Uh, you know, was, you know I, I said yes, I won, I won the fight, I wanted it there and then. Um, I was ready for it. And, you know, he was the one who didn't turn up on the night. You know, he can back up his words, he to make the weight. So, you know, but I was there, I was there ready to fight, so. Um, so, so it's not something that was like previous? I think it was something that was always building up gradually, but few things were said, weren't there? I think there was sort of a, I don't know, there was a couple of things said to him, for whatever reason, he it, it, it was called in our days, and as, as Nathan said, he was he turned professional. Earlier. So to a certain extent, he was a little bit far further forward. But then Tony just kept calling you out. Yeah, you know, I think uh, ultimately I was at the position where Tony wanted what Tony was craving. Um, I don't think he could 
Nathan, two things. What did you make of Tony Bellew's last performance, where he obviously fought in a very different way to what we've seen in the past? And, and secondly, are you, are you, obviously we know about your temperament and your ability and your skills. Um, it's the second part of this question is, 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 you're still a work in progress in some ways, even though you're world champion. Yeah. How much further have you got to go in your own ability and in your own learning and experience? Um, first, I think, you know, the last fight was was uh, a little step up for, for Tony um, in terms of his performance. You know, he showed a little bit of discipline. Um, he comes with the fight, he, you know, he did win quite comfortably, so you know, can't really take anything away from his performance. You know, he, he done well. Um, you know, but whether it's, it was enough to, to, to grant him a world title fight, I'm not so sure, but that's the way it is. That's the fight we want, um, and it's going ahead. So, but in terms of um, my progress and, and whether there's more to come, I definitely think so. Um, we're 24 now, and every time I step into the gym after each fight, I'm feeling stronger, um, just feeling more mature. And, um, yeah, I, I definitely think. If I was speaking truthfully, I think you know I'm, I'm about four, four years away from my peak yet, so I'm, I'm really proud of my achievements, what I've, what I've already got, and I think there's definitely a lot more to come. 
Will you be sparring with George Groves at all now? He's part of the stable as well. Yeah, well, he's uh, signed up now under, under Frank Warren, so that's, that's a, a, a great move for him. Uh, obviously, he's a, he's a good orthodox fighter, so yeah, why not? You know, it would be good to, uh, yeah. to get uh, good preparation. Thank you. Nathan, how did you, um, you've shown the capacity in recent fights for getting a tear up to every fight going really neat? I'm not going to stop. No way. No way. That's that's the way. It, um, I, I just love fighting like that. I love getting into tear ups. Uh, I know <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite an exciting side at times. Uh, I know a lot of people enjoy watching me fight. I do take risks. I take a lot of risks, um, and especially when up against dangerous punches, which apparently Tony is, but you know, I'm, we'll soon find out about that, but uh, I'm unsure about that. But yeah, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still prepared to take risks, and, uh, but at the same time it's important that I've, I've got a plan B, which is to, to use my boxing skills, and whenever called upon in the fight, I'll always uh, change my plan, uh, but uh, either way, you know, it is, I'll adapt to what's needed to win the fight. That's, that's the most important thing. Uh, plan A and Plan B. Both undefeated fighters as well, going into this as well. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. You know, that, that always makes the fight interesting. Someone, someone's got to lose for the first time in their life. And, uh, I've, I'm not used to that feeling. Obviously, Tony has not uh, experienced that yet. So, it's going to, uh, someone's record is going to be, uh, it's going to be ruined in, in the next fight. So, you know, I had the same case with, with Karl Murat, two fights ago for the World Title and made that he was undefeated in 23 fights. But, you know, I'm, I love that. You know, I, I, I quite, I thrive on the, the challenge of that. But uh, you know, Tony Berg is going to suffer his first defeat. I think he's talked himself into trouble. Uh, I think he's going to regret it afterwards, definitely. How many did you lose to Um I only had six, 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 six fights as an amateur, and I lost uh, three. Who's the last one you lost? He's got another six. special um, because as, as I was growing up you know I always always saw Ben Hopkins um, you know, you're on TV and everybody talked about him as a major American boxer um, you know, he was a real class act to be in a position now to to know that I'm possibly one fight away from from sharing the ring with a legend like Hopkins So we were on the corner, provided I put on a good show now on October 15th, then you know, that, that's the kind of fight we, we're looking at. I, I, want, I would definitely, it's, it's a fight that I would fancy. Uh, you know, he's, he's an outstanding, outstanding fight, he's proved that an absolute legend. Um, but I think this is definitely a fight that's winnable. Did you call sport mode? Uh, well, uh, 
I saw him on fight night, obviously, from, from ringside. Because um, I, I fought earlier in the night, and later on I relaxed and watched the fight at ringside. And, you, know, you, you could see he was class, but you know, we're all human, and he's just another, another fighter. Um, but I think he struggles against a certain style. What's happening with Enzo Matt in LA? Do you like to be on this film? He's uh, the boxing board of control, uh, I think, want to see him uh, with, uh, to make sure that he, if they do let him carry on boxing, uh, he's okay. So that would be the procedure. Uh, you know, so can I just talk a bit more about um, following the footsteps of Joe? Because, in a sense, you know, bringing Hopkins, obviously with the value fight preceding this. Um, you know, bringing Hopkins to Cardiff and almost finishing the job that Joe started on him. Does, is that in your mind at all? Um, not really. I think it's, it's just a fight that, uh, you know, it's, it's not really planned that way. Um, I'm planned to, to emulate um, of, of what Joe was doing. Um, started really, but it's just a matter of, of taking the best fight out of the moment for myself, and which would be a great fight for the Millennium Stadium in Wales. Uh, which would be a, a great sell, uh, bringing a legend over from America. And just I'm a you know a brilliant boxing event. That's that's the way I look at it. And, um, I think it, it, it would be a, a great fight. You know, the legend of myself being the, the young uh, world champion coming soon. <coughs> so I just think it would be a, a great match, it would be interesting. Uh, it would be, be a good fight. What were you doing? Busy people, Frank? In Wales, career going on the same way. Yeah, yeah, every, every fight is progressing, getting bigger and bigger. I think they're just waiting for that big homecoming, really, on the right fight. I just, just say I think that would be the, the, the fight, you know, we're not, unless. But if you think that's 
amazing. Every every nearly every major city in the UK has got a, a venue that holds over ten thousand people. So we go from the ice rink to the Millennium Stadium. Sure, the ladies are a lot better still over there. I mean, one of the things like that's my dream to share the women with their lockings, and the uh, odd draws be my favorite fight there. And I uh, just can't believe what's happening since I've taken over three years ago. It's just snowballed, you know, and he's, he's progressing all the time. He's he's progressed as a community fight. He's come on a, 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 bit, a, a, bit, a bit again, a lot stronger, a lot better, a bit more ring knowledge, and I think he's capable of. Stop with Tony Bell, and I think then he'll um, be better at Hopkins as well. We're great in law. <coughs> the fight won't be done at Hopkins' this fight, at the base. It'll be done at Clevery's base, and not done at Hopkins' this base. You see that in 19 training, will be done with quality he's got down the way he's improved to the fire pressure. Mm -hmm. Since the last fight alone, the, the, the difference is made the boy is absolutely tremendous. He's stronger. His knowledge, his in craft is improving. He's getting there. And he's a very knowledgeable fighter. People will underestimate how knowledgeable he is. He can, he can work out the, the opponent's weaknesses. He knows how to fight, he knows how to box. A lot of people there criticize him for the more meaning fight for us. That's the guy I never wanted to fight at all. Well, it, was a, it was a totally different style yeah. than yeah. 48 hours yeah. in the show. So. But if he fought that guy again, it would be a totally different result. You know, Nate would probably stop him. You know, we do it from that point. Big difference. You know, we don't take nothing for granted. Anymore. As I said, Nate is training. He's training the challenger. And Tony Bell, is British belt, man. So, he, you know, so he's, he, he gave Tony that belt. And then he wants to be the British champion. Although he's a world champion. <laughs> Frank, do you know where the fight will be shown yet? Is it Sky? Is it not done any deals? So we're negotiating, and there's uh, and we've got we're announcing another world title fight as well. 